Hi everyone, I'm Jay and this is the Camden Stitch. Hello, welcome back to the Sewing on a Budget series. I um, hope you've got a lovely weekend of sewing planned. Um, I'm a bit sad that this series is going to be coming to an end soon. Uh, just one next week where I'll do a roundup, include everybody's top tips. Thank you so much to everybody for joining in with this series so enthusiastically. Um, I've had such nice conversations in the comments um, and I've had lots of nice comments on Instagram, people saying that they've managed to snag themselves real bargains. They, uh, somebody messaged me last week to say that she uh, saved 200 pounds buying a sewing machine on eBay because she watched this vlog and remembered to check on eBay, found the same model that she was going to buy brand new, saved herself 200 pounds. I am so chuffed. Well done. Thank you so much for joining in. I'm really happy. Um, okay, I hope your so frugal makes are going well as well. Um, today I'm going to be talking about patterns and where we can get them either cheap or free. I got a lot of information for you, so let's get to it, shall we? Now, it wouldn't be a sewing on the budget video if I didn't mention my two favourites, Gumtree and Freecycle. Not so good for patterns. I do ask periodically to see if anybody's got any lying around, but I've never seen any advertised and um, I've just never managed to snag any. Um, but do keep your eye out because people will clear, it, clear out periodically and I'm sure that they exist, it does happen, it's just uh, my persistence hasn't yet paid off in that arena. However, there are lots of other ways to get yourself free patterns. Um, let's start with online. Um, Millie, in a previous video, brought to my attention Mood and I'd forgotten, but Mood have a society called Mood Society and they have loads and loads of free patterns as well as a calculator that you can calculate um, a circle skirt, how much fabric you'll need and length etc and it works out all the pie for you. Uh, but they've got some patterns on there and they look really really good. I haven't made up any myself but I've seen, um, I've followed somebody on Instagram who's made a few of them, they look really good um, so do check them out. There is also a blogger called Sustainability. She's also on Instagram. Um, I'll pop a name up at the bottom. Now on her blog, she very painstakingly made a list of all the free patterns that you can find on the internet. And she's updated it, uh, well, this year. Um, so it's fairly up to date. Um, there's lots and lots on there. And if you do use that list, then please sort of give her a thank you because it must have taken a long time. Um, that is one of the problems with looking for free patterns on the internet. If you're looking for anything free on the internet, you will find that a lot of people who are good at writing search engine optimization, that means putting in the keywords, to, that which means their hits come up high on Google, um, will actually just have pages with lots and lots of adverts on that you'll click through and you'll never actually find the free pattern. And it can be like wandering down a bit of a, a maze, a bit of a rabbit hole, um, and it can be quite difficult to find what you want. You'll follow lots of links only to find that the pattern isn't free after all. Um, so the fact that somebody has taken the time to make a list of free patterns is brilliant. Use these resources. Um, I found her through the Fold Line group. Now, the Fold Line group is a, um, a the Fold Line you probably know. They um, are an organisation company who sell sewing patterns and uh, host a lot of uh, reviews about indie sewing patterns. They feature a lot of bloggers. Um, and they have a group on Facebook that is an absolute brilliant resource for you if you're looking for something. Excuse me, itchy nose. And if you go on the Fold Line group and search for free patterns, you'll find, uh, again, link, lots of links to free patterns, posts where people are asking about free patterns and people respond. Um, so they are great resources if you're looking for free patterns. Now, the problem is with these is obviously they're gonna be PDFs. Uh, it's not free to print them. Obviously you've either got it, if there's a A0 copy shop file available, you've got to pay the printer and pay the postage, or you've got to pay the ink and paper of printing out on your home home computer and then sit and stick it together. But you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch, is there? There's no such thing as a free pattern. However, what is free is using what you already have. And my dress here on the mannequin, um, I'll post some better pictures of it, um, is a great example of this. This is 
a copy of this McCall's pattern that I saw recently. They It was in their uh, late summer releases and I absolutely adored it. But it's very similar to the Jessica dress that I've made recently and uh, obviously perfected the fit of the Jessica. So all I did with this one is squared off the neckline, added the tie sleeves, and as you can see, it is identical to the pattern in the on the McCall's pattern. Um, now, I think that a lot of sewists seem to kind of forget the patterns that they've got in their stash or perhaps underestimate how easy it is to change them um, into another pattern and uh, one of the wonderful things about my pattern drafting course even though it was pretty basic and I didn't even learn how to draft a block but it gave me the confidence to change existing patterns into something different by either moving a dart, uh, rotating a dart, um, slashing and spreading to add volume or just simply changing the style lines and um, you can do that with so many patterns that you already own and if you spent a lot of time fitting a pattern it really is worthwhile uh, playing about with that pattern obviously trace it off anew every time and get some cheap calico or I use poly cotton to make my toiles um, and just use them as complete chuck away toiles that you can mark on them and when you're just making a toile like that where it's not going to be wearable you don't have to make the facings um i mean obviously you do if it's a more complicated pattern that needs the zip and everything but often if it's just a bodice that's got a, a zip in it just spend the time spend half an hour making up a toile um it is time really well spent you might be able to replicate that pattern that you see instead of spending the money um buying it because obviously you know as well as I do, you go to a shop, buy one pattern and then you think, oh, you know, I'll just spend enough to get the free postage. And then before you know it, you spent 45 quid and you only want, you only went into the shop for a pint of milk, didn't you? So um, yeah, think about using what you have. Think about um, swapping with friends, which I think is okay with paper patterns. Obviously, um, patterns are for personal use only. It is not okay to send each other uh, your PDFs. Unfortunately, I think that's against the license and it does make it difficult for the designers uh, because obviously they can't sell patterns if people are sharing them internally. But I think uh, for paper patterns, it is okay to share them with friends and family. Uh, I mean, obviously to me, it just makes it's common sense, isn't it? Lending things and sharing things is much more sustainable because it's just using what we have. Uh, but I do understand that people also need to make a living. Um, so I think you just have to be a, use a bit of common sense when it comes to sharing. Car boots are absolutely wonderful for uh, patterns. You can get them for pennies and it's one of the sort of last remaining places where you can buy things for pennies um, or you can buy a big box full or a bulk because people just want to get rid of them. They don't want to have to charge a hundred people, 40 p per pattern. You know, you can just give them a fiver and you'll get a whole big box of patterns. Keep your eyes peeled, keep your eyes near the ground because that's where they tend to be. Don't know why, but in my experience, um, charity shops, charity shops are hit and miss. I think that haberdashery crafts, tends to come with bric-a-brac and often charity shops don't know where to keep them because they don't get enough of them to have or they don't sell enough of these sort of things to have a section devoted to them so often they will keep them in the back I know when I started knitting and I was looking for knitting needles I had to ask in so many shops and they all kept the knitting needles in the back room um, every time I go into charity shops I ask about sewing patterns I know I've mentioned this before some people don't even know what sewing patterns are when you ask uh, but sometimes you get lucky. I found a whole box of vintage patterns when I was in, not sure if it was in Aberystwyth. Um, and yeah, um, a whole box of vintage Vogue patterns that they weren't keeping out because nobody ever wanted them. So they'd got them all in the back and I had a, a very happy half hour rifling through my uh, Vogue patterns. Um, so it's worth asking. Another sort of free patterns is um, a lot of indie designers will offer one free pattern and sometimes you do have to sign up for the newsletter. Again, you're giving over your information for free, but you can always cancel that newsletter. Um, so it, if you really like the work of, I don't know, Closet Case or uh, pay, Papercut or whatever, then go on their website. You might find that they offer a free PDF download. Um, let's talk about pattern testing. Obviously it is 
uh, a subject that provokes debate. Um, I think that patent testing, you're not getting a free patent, you're actually putting in over a hundred pounds worth of work and knowledge and uh, money that you spend on the fabric, unless they provide the fabric, but um, most patent testers don't, some do, but it's the exception rather than the rule in my experience. Um, however, patent testing is fun. It uh, can be really interesting. It can help you gain knowledge. If you're looking to build your Instagram account, it can be a great way of introducing yourself to a new set of followers. Um, and yeah, so I wouldn't rule it out, but what I would say is the pattern that you tend to get from pattern testing isn't free. It involves a lot of um, hours of labor, uh, but it's a fun thing to do. Facebook is absolutely wonderful for getting discount patterns. Uh, often they'll be four or five quid, including postage. Um, there are groups on there which exclusively sells patterns. One is called the Pattern Exchange Group and there's another one that I can't remember the name of, but I will link them in the description box. eBay is pretty good for patterns. I do sell patterns on eBay and I tend to sell them for a fiver, including postage. If it's one that you're looking for, you can't find anywhere else that tends to be cheaper than, um, than they are on Amazon. Um, yeah, I just sell the ones that I've got no use for anymore and just try and recoup a bit of uh, the money that I spent on them. Um, but lots of other people sell on there as well and I'd say it's probably cheaper than buying them new. Uh, but obviously check online as well. Amazon tends to be pretty competitive price-wise. When it comes to big four patterns, you'll be aware that they have a rolling schedule of um, sales and there's always one of the big four or big seven or whatever they are. Um, there's always one of them, one brand that is on sale every month. If that isn't the one that you want, then it can be annoying waiting for it to come round. I don't ever buy patterns at full price. I think that the full price is, it's not the real price. It's just one that you have to pay. It's like a tax on it, on you if you need it now. Uh, but I can usually wait for my sewing patterns. I've already got plenty of A patterns and B, I've already got plenty of projects um, waiting to be made. So for me, it's worth waiting for them to come on sale, but I don't actually need to because I subscribe to Sew Direct. Now Sew Direct, that Sew Direct is the UK stockist of all the big seven sewing pattern brands. So every pattern that's for sale in the UK that you can get on Minerva Crafts or uh, Jaycott's, um, they are all managed through Sew Direct. If you subscribe to the Sew Direct magazine, it's 28 quid for eight issues um, that is paid by direct debit. It's seven pounds every three months. Um, now I've been subscribing for ages. I think it's really good value. Their magazine is actually one of the better sewing magazines. It tends to have some really in-depth articles about uh, fashion history and couture. Um, it is not just the kind of, I think a lot of sewing magazines tend to be a lot of advertising for sewing machines, etc., uh, sponsored posts and things. Uh, I think that Sew Direct magazine is quite good, but what it is, is it tends to have a lot of um, advertising for the upcoming sewing magazines. So every release, so same McCall's have just released their summer patterns. Uh, the next issue of Sew Direct will be showing all the McCall's or all the Vogue uh, patterns. But like I said, I do think they have some interesting articles. If you subscribe on that deal that I've mentioned, I'm not affiliated to them by the way at all. There are some downsides which I'll come to in a moment. If you subscribe on that deal that I've talked about, you also get two free patterns of your choice. If you choose two Vogue patterns, then you've got eight issues of a sewing magazine, which is only good value if you read it. If you don't, then forget that. But eight, eight issues of the sewing magazine and two patterns for 28 pounds. And I think that's pretty good. Now, if you subscribe to that, then you get 40% off all the big seven patterns all year round. Uh, so you basically have a login for the site and then all the patterns will appear with the discount deducted, which brings them in at between, I'd say between sort of five and six pounds per pattern. I think that's much better value. I buy enough big four patterns that it's worth me doing that. I think I saved loads of money uh, by buying through that and like I said I do enjoy that magazine and um, 
so that is worth considering. However, I will say I've had a lot of problems with Zodirect in terms of them not being able to fulfill their orders. They, there was a period when uh, they started stocking Simplicity and previously, I think what happened was Simplicity merged with Butterix McCalls, etc., who uh, had previously been sold through so Direct. Simplicity came on board and maybe one or two others. And I think there was a quite a big bedding down period. During that period, um, deliveries were very slow. Their, I'd say their tech is not up to speed. The website is incredibly slow. You don't get a confirmation email when you have placed your order, which I think is a real problem. And what was happening was I was placing orders. They were decent orders for maybe a hundred pounds. Um, two weeks later, the, or the order still hadn't come. I didn't have an acknowledgement email. So it wasn't like I could phone them up and say, I've got this order number. Um, and yeah, things were getting lost and that happened to me about three times. And I did become really acquainted with the customer service woman. It is one person there who's fielding all the calls on her own. And it does seem to me like for such a big organization, I wish they had a bit more backroom support. I'm sure they do as well. Um, the lady was very helpful, but it got to the point that after the third order had gone missing and it wasn't a matter of oh yes, I'm terribly sorry, we'll send it back out again. It was a matter of, uh, well, you'll have to wait and you know we'll try and look round for it and just getting faffed about all the time. Um, I did in the end ask for my complaint to be escalated and spoke to one of the, uh, I don't, can't remember a position, one of the higher up people in the organisation. She was extremely apologetic and very helpful. She gave me a very thorough response to my complaint and gave me a very generous discount on some patterns and some free patterns as well. So I was very satisfied with how my complaint was resolved, but I still have to alert you that that happened. Um, however, I am still happy with my membership. I've kept my membership up. So I would, going forward, fingers crossed, I haven't placed an order for a little bit, but fingers crossed um, they will carry on being good. Um, eBay are great. Oh yeah, I've already touched on eBay. Um, eBay are also great for vintage patterns, but you do just have to watch because they are not, not super, super cheap. Um, the postage does tend to rack up and they can get quite expensive. People tend to send, sell vintage patterns in job lots. I love it. I've had some fantastic job lots in there. I have also got sucked into overpaying because I've liked one or two in a job lot of 10. And then when it's come, I've thought, well, really, you know, I've paid a lot for those two patterns that I liked. However, I mean, personally, I go on and resell the patterns that I don't like. So I do tend to recoup the cost, but that's because, you know, I'm an avid buyer and seller of things. Um, I'm never off eBay. Um, I know that I am a fan of Birda and uh, a few sewing magazines I really, really like. If you like a lot of the patterns in the sewing magazine, they can be a great source of cheap patterns. I know I posted my most recent review of uh, Birda, August Birda. Um, I think I definitely I'm going to sew at least three of those patterns, if not more. And that, that um, magazine was £3.75. No, sorry, that magazine was £5.75. Um, that's pretty good for three or four patterns and some more that you may use. Um, and all you've got to do is trace those patterns onto paper. Obviously that takes time, but I wouldn't say it takes more time than sticking together a PDF. It probably is a bit more head scratchy to be fair. Um, but you know, don't be, don't be intimidated by Birda. Um, friend Rachel Stitched Up did a great vlog um, demystifying Birda tracing. So check that out if you're thinking about going going the Birda route. I should also mention pattern swaps. Um, annually, um, the Zipper Foot and the Polka Dot Palace, um, Alice and Emma, uh, run the great big pattern swap on Instagram. Now, the first year I participated was 2018. Um, what It was great and I got loads of patterns and I gave away loads of patterns and it was brilliant. However, this year, it was super competitive and it, for me, I found that it was really impossible to get any patterns because they were snapped up so quickly. And I do fear that some of those were being resold in Facebook groups. Um, there wasn't as many, if everybody's participating, there should be as many patterns going out as coming in. It didn't feel like that to me. Um, and I know I wasn't the only person that 
felt like they didn't get many. I sent off, obviously I sent off more than I got back um, and it did start to rack up in terms of postage. I mean, it's nice to join in, but when you're having to pay three pounds per pattern to post, some of them you can get away with posting for one pound 60, but you know, if you post eight patterns, it does start to rack up in terms of money. So it's fun to join in with, but I think in the future, I'll just be swapping maybe one or two patterns and hoping that I get one or two back. Um, they're really fun to join in with. And obviously you get a lot more back than uh, just the pattern because you get to join in with the sewing challenge and it's fun you get to connect with other members of the Facebook community so I just thought that was worth a mention. Um, going back to the issue of sewing magazines obviously they do have cover mounted gifts and a lot of sewing magazines come with at least two if not three I've seen patterns lately. Now I would warn you against getting sucked in by freebies are you going to use those patterns? These sewing magazines tend to be about eight or nine pounds these days. Uh, they are not cheap. And unless you're gonna use at least two of the patterns and they're not always in every single size, so are they gonna uh, fit you? Um, if you like the magazine and you enjoy reading the magazine, that's fine. But for myself, I find that I don't really tend to read the magazine. I start reading it and then I find it a bit dull. Um, so. I don't know what I would say is if you're sewing on a budget just weigh up whether or not you will use those because I see a lot of these free patterns for sale on Facebook groups and I think a lot of people buy the magazines and think they're going to use the patterns and then don't um, obviously it can, that can work out quite expensive in the long run um, I tell you what I think a really interesting prospect is these PDF subscriptions. Seamwork is probably one of the better known ones, um, but I used to subscribe also to Wear Lemonade. Um, Wear Lemonade is a French pattern company. They have a lot of patterns and um, as soon as you subscribe, you have to sign up for at least three months. I think it's about eight pounds a month. Um, as soon as you sign up, all their library of PDF patterns are available to you. I do really like their patterns. I think that they are very modern and very fashionable patterns. Uh, you do have to be careful because the instructions, although the instructions are in English, the translation isn't wonderful. If you're a beginner and it's a complicated pattern, then just double check that the that you understand the instructions before you download it because I made some dungarees from there and the patterns, the instructions were a little bit sketchy in some places. Uh, but they can seem very tempting, but you can finish, like anything that you subscribe to, you can finish up overpaying in the long run. People love to get your bank details, your direct debit details, because in general, people don't tend to cancel these things. You tend to forget about them, they run on, and the company's got a nice income. Um, it's brilliant for the company themselves, but um, for yourself, are you going to get the value from that? Because they really do top up over the year. I mean, what I'd say is, look at what the cost is over a year and see whether you think it's worth paying that because it's likely that you will finish up um, paying for quite a few more months than you actually are using the patterns for but it is worth looking at I would just say just keep an eye on them just keep an eye on them as they run on I signed off seam work because I couldn't use the credits as fast as I was amassing them and it, yeah it wasn't good value for me anymore uh, uh, uh. I think a wonderful overlooked source of free patterns are pattern books. There are some brilliant pattern books out there. The Great British Sewing Bee pattern books, you can get them very cheap on eBay. Make sure that they've got the pattern sheets with them. Uh, I got one on Amazon that came without the pattern sheets. Thankfully, I, I contacted the seller and they found them and sent them along. But uh, sometimes they get separated in the warehouse. Um, if you can get hold of the Tilly books, I mean, I use a lot of those patterns in those books. I think that they tend to offer really good value for money if you're going to sew all the patterns. If you're not, then they are not good value for money. Oh, I just mentioned the So Many Dresses book as well. That is one that I think is great. I think that there's some brilliant patterns in there. And the So Many Dresses book is an absolutely brilliant introduction to pattern drafting. Uh, I know it, it's not sold as that, and it doesn't really tell you that that is what it's going to be about, but that is effectively what it is because it takes a basic, basic bodice or eight, three or four basic bodices, and it shows you how to change them into different things. So I think that's a brilliant resource and that will really get you started on hacking your own patterns and it will actually save you a lot of money on patterns in the long run. Again, I'm not affiliated by that book, but I do really like it. I do really recommend it. 
I think that's all from me. I bet that you have got some good ideas and I bet I've missed some things. So please let me know in my downstairs what I've missed. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed listening to me waffle today about free sewing patterns and cheap sewing patterns. Um, if you enjoyed this vlog, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, then click on the subscribe button and uh, press the ding ding bell to get no notifications from me and you'll get a little notification every time I post a new vlog. Next week, it's gonna be the roundup of everything that we have, uh, everything that you have suggested in, during this series and we'll also be looking at how I'm getting on with my So Frugal Challenge. Um, and then obviously I will bob back onto the vlog um, in the Sewing on the Budget series to announce the winner of the Sew, uh, the Sew Frugal Challenge. That'll be at the end of September. Have a great weekend sewing sisters and sewing misters. Love you lots. Bye bye.